Welcome to EPG Partshala. Dear students, the module that we would be discussing today is History of Human Settlements, Part 7, that is uh, the colonization period or the colonization era in India. And the learning objectives are that we would start with an introduction and then we would go through the various phases of this colonization period starting from the Portuguese to the Dutch to the Danish and the French and um, in the forthcoming the British part will come. So uh, we start off with the introduction. Now the colonial period spread or the colonial period extended from 17th to 19th century or the duration of this uh, colonial period was from 17th to 19th century. We start with the Mm, introduction, we see that the colonial period or the duration of the colonial period was from 17th to the 19th century uh, in our um, country and we see that early relationships or the whoever the colonizers came, they started with trade and then but the eventual outcome was uh, invasion or an attempt for the same. Now India, why did, or why did they come to India? India was, uh, or had rich resources in terms of silk, gold, spices, and um, skilled artisans were there. And so therefore it attracted many European countries to come in for trade, but they ended up colonizing a India. This slide shows the different time periods of time the Portuguese when they came to India and how long they stayed in India from 1498 to 1961. The Dutch India uh, after the Portuguese we see that the, there was this Dutch who came to India that was from 1602 to 1825. So it was not that one, one uh, country came after another country had gone. They came one after the another, but 1498 the Portuguese came. In 1602 the Dutch came. In 1612 the British East India Company came. In 1620 the Danish came and in 1675 the French came. So they came in, in these various points of time, but they stayed on uh, also at varying points of time. Like the Portuguese stayed on till 1961, the Dutch stayed till 1825, the British East India Company, just the British East India Company, because there was, after that there was this British Raj, so the British East India Company stayed till 1858, then the Danish stayed till 1869, the French till 1954. So the Portuguese quest to find a new sea trading route and the availability of spices in the Indian coasts led them, led to the first colonial settlements in India. And as we can see that during different points of time, as I said earlier, the Dutch, the British, the Danish, the French came in and they followed the same routes for their Indian conquests at the periods of time which I have mentioned and which is given in this slide. Now we come to the various companies which were formed or which were there by various countries, European countries and their headquarters and their purpose. So we find that the Portuguese East India Company uh, headquarters were in Cochin, which is today Kochi in Kerala, and later in Goa. Uh, and in the year 1498 they came and their purpose was trade, as I, I was mentioning earlier in the earlier slide. Now then came the Dutch East India Company, whose Headquarter was in Pulikat, later Nagapattinam, and then 
and in 1692, as I mentioned earlier, and their purpose was to trade and colonize. Then the British East India Company, their headquarter was in Surat first, then later Mum Bombay, now Mumbai, Masulipattanam, later Madras, followed by Calcutta. And they came in 1612, and they were, also their purpose was trade. Then Danish East India Company came in, whose headquarter was in Tranquibar in Tamil Nadu, later Sirampur in West Bengal. And then their purpose was trade and exploitation. The Dutch East India Company came in, whose headquarter was in Surat, later Pondicherry. And then the and their purpose was to colonize, and then British Raj. These British Raj was, they first ruled from Calcutta and later from New Delhi when the capital shifted, and their purpose was to rule and exploit. So the English uh, or the British East India Com British actually stayed on as in contrast with the other European countries. And they ruled the country till 1947 when India gained independence. Now the colonial period, if we see here, the, this slide uh, talks about or shows the colonial settlements, the various, all the, set, the settlements by these various European countries at different points of time. So we can see the English settlements, the French settlements, the Dutch settlements, and the Danish settlements, and all along the coasts, the western coast, the eastern coast, the all along the coast, these settlements where people or you know, the European countries came and settled down. About the socio-economic and infrastructural conditions of this time period, we see that the trade flourished through waterways. So therefore, there were these ports grew. Ports which became, were important and which later became or developed as port cities. So there was growth in ports in port infrastructure, and therefore the port cities developed. And port infrastructure was developed to make the ports more productive. Railways, and how did the other part of the city get connected to the coast of the coasts of our country or of India? Railways connected the rest of the India from the other settle settlements or cities to these cities or to these port cities. So therefore, as I said, railways linked the inland cities to the port cities. So that's how the country de developed, the cities in the country developed at the, that point of time. And lots of t over a, over this course of over the course of time, lots of settlements or many settlements I won't say lots but many settlements in the colonizers the way the colonizers constructed came up along with various infrastructure supporting their lifestyle that is forts, bridges, roadways, churches, administrative units plazas, marketplaces, as well as infrastructure for trade, that is docks, lighthouses, networks connecting ports and inner areas, industrial units, quays, canals, etc. Now, there was this colonial rule, that is, in the states which were colonized. Then there was king's rule in the princely states, 
and indigenous tribes in other areas. So the, the country at that point of time had these three major, these three uh, significant uh, governance or significant characteristics in governance, that is states which are ruled by the colonizers, states, the princely states by the king and the where the tribes were there. Next we come to the Portuguese colonies or the time when Portuguese were in India. The arrival of Vasco da Gama in Calicut on Malabar coast marked the beginning of Portuguese coming to India and the Portuguese settlements in India, followed by Cochin. Now, after the fall of Constantinople in 1453, the Portuguese East India Company discovered a new sea route to India by way of the Horn of Africa. Originally purely a commercial venture, Portuguese mission quickly became baptizing India into Roman Catholicism. And the main or the significant cities which of those that period of time was Calicut, Cochin, Kananur, Nagapatnam, Goa, Bombay, Basin, Diu, Hooghly and Daman. So these were both on the western coast as well as eastern coast as you can see in this drawing. Now the Portuguese acquired Goa since 1510 after defeating the ruling Bijapur Sultan Yusuf Adil Shah and continued to rule until 1961. The roads, if we see the first permanent settlement which this figure shows, that is Velha Goa or Old Goa. And if we try to understand its settlement pattern, we see that the roads are in concentric pattern with all leading to the docks where the port activities was prevalent. And there was a wall city used for protection. Then the settlements were around forts and the first was Fort Tiracol followed by Fort Aguada. And in the late 17th century, churches became a prominent feature of the settlements. And the shelters were of vernacular style and developed in a haphazard manner. Then we come to the Dutch colonies. We see that the Dutch East India Company, was, which was formed in 1602, set up settlements at Masulipatnam, Kolikat, Surat, Karaikal, Nagapatinam, Chinsura, Kasim Bazar, Varanagar, Patna, Palasore, and Cochin. So this was basically mostly on the eastern coast. Chinsura was in West Bengal, and the rest, three of three sir, settlements were in the eastern coast and there was this Kochi on the western coast. So these were the major settlements. As I said earlier, Pulikat, Masulipatnam, Chinsura, Nagapatnam and Cochin. And after the middle of the 17th century, English began or the British began to emerge as a colonial power. And the Anglo-Dutch rivalry lasted for seven decades and, the led, and led to the defeat of Dutch in 1759 in the Battle of Bedara. Then we come to our, our next aspect which we'll see is, let us understand Cochin. Because Cochin was one of the uh, settlements which Dutch um, invaded and um, what was the settlement pattern at that time? Let us have a look. 
Now, known as the queen of the Arabian Sea, Cochin was an important spice trading center on the west coast of India from 14th century. Occupied by the Portuguese Empire in 1503, Kochi was the first of the European colonies in colonial India. It remained the main seat of Portuguese India until 1530, when Goa was chosen. Now, built at the mouth of seven rivers and falling into the Arabian Sea, the first settlement came up around the modern fort, Fort Kochi area, as we all know. Now, the city organically grew around the fortified part. Roads connected the various docks around the settlement and distinct colonies near to docks were the Dutch and, the, and then the settlements of the local growing spices uh, came up. So after the Dutch uh, colonies in India and after the Dutch rule, let us now discuss about the East India Company in India, which was from the 17th to the 18th century. Uh, we see that in 1612, during the height of the power of the Mughal Empire, Emperor Jahangir issued a farman or an order permitting the setting up of a factory at Surat in today's Gujarat, which marked the beginning of the East India Company's colonization, period of colonization of, our, of India. After the middle of the 17th century, the British began or the began to emerge as, or England began to emerge as a major colonial power and led to the defeat of the Dutch in 1759 in the Battle of Bedara. When we look at the settlement planning of this time, we found, we find that the settlements, uh, the British developed those settlements around uh, or they exploited rather the, the areas where the Dutch or the Portuguese had their uh, production areas or the settlements which uh, had a function of production and they used it for trade. The factory sites were located in close proximity to other colonial settlements and after a period of time, after they have de had defeated the Dutch and the Portuguese and the other colonizers, the British changed their settlements or the function of the settlements from trading centers to political, military, economic centers, which became the, the focus or the most important uh, elements of all British settlements. And thus, the major components of the settlements became or were the warehouses, the barracks, the forts and the quarters. The forts were well protected because they need to protect themselves. So forts were well protected and accordingly designed. And the major settlements of this time were Surat in, uh, in 1612, Bombay 1638, Madras which was 1639, Hooghly, 1658, Visakhapatnam, 1682, and Calcutta, 1690. Now let us look at one by one these settlements, few of these settlements, and how they were planned, and what were their characteristics. So we find that uh, the first settlement which we are discussing is Surat. So it initially, uh, so, um, Surat is along the sea and initially it was developed as a trade transit point but Surat soon fell into the hands of the East India Company from the Indian merchant princes. By the middle of the 19th century it had a population of around 8 lakhs but saw, saw a steep decline in the later part, later centuries. It was developed as a port city in an organic manner. It had unplanned roads, 
narrow lanes and all the roads led to the port as you can see in this figure. There was haphazard growth of settlement around the docks, industries and market areas and it consisted elements of the Mughal and the Dutch period. But it had an unplanned infrastructure and poor sanitation system. And over a period of time, as we all know, Surat became known, of course, for a different reason, that was the plague. Now we come to Bombay. In 1687, the English or the British East India Company transferred its headquarters from Surat to Bombay. And following the transfer, Bombay was placed at the head of all companies' establishments in India. The company's military successes in the Deccan paved the way for educational and economic progress, which characterized the city during the 19th century, leading to the city development during 1817 to 1885. Bombay had seven islands. In fact, Bombay uh, had been uh, gifted as dowry from uh, king or prince to in dowry for his daughter's marriage. So the seven islands uh, by 1845, um, all the seven islands were connected to form a single island called Old Bombay with an area of about 435 square kilometers. Next we come to the how or the pattern of Bombay, what was the settlement pattern like? So, Bombay started as a fortified island, which is the Bombay fort, which was used for protection from the Mughals and the Portuguese. So, British started it, they built a fort and uh, as you can see in these figures, and there were public squares for military and symbolic purposes and also used for social gatherings. There were wide roads along which troops could be deployed or moved quickly. Then um, new settlements had special segregation on racial basis, the English or the whites and the natives or the blacks were specially segregated and uh, the acquired settlements had no clear rules of segregation. It was a result of regulation of various economic and public activities. As you can see, uh, Bombay is linear in nature and uh, it had a long coastline and this long coast, coastal frontage was an opportunity which the British was quick to understand and thus shifting, they shifted their base from Surat to Bombay and built the fort and uh, developed Bombay accordingly. Uh, prepared it for their, for their uh, purposes, military purposes and so they had wide roads as I said earlier. Next we come to Madras. Mad Madras is today, today's Chennai and it is in the southern part of India on the eastern coast. Now modern Chennai or Madras was actually a colonial city and its initial growth was closely tied or initial growth was due to an artificial harbour and a trading centre. When the Portuguese arrived in 1522, they built a port and named it Sao Tome after the Christian apostle Saint Thomas who is believed to have preached here between 1552 and 1570. The region or this area or this settlement then passed into the hands of the Dutch who established themselves near Pulikat, just north of the city in 1612. And both groups, the Portuguese as well as the Dutch, strived to grow their colonial population and although their population reached about 10,000 people when the British arrived they remained substantially outnumbered by the local Indian populace. 
And about the settlement pattern, what we see that it initially started from St. Fort George. Again, the forti fortified settlement which the British started, which grew to envelop the villages to form Madras. As I said, it was a fortified settlement as we could have seen in Mom Bombay also. There was a fort and it was a fortified settlement. In Madras also the same pattern was there. It was a fortified settlement of British merchants, factory workers and other colonial settlers. There was grid iron pattern with public structures like the church, harbour, government structures, fort, graveyards, etc. And you can see in this picture of Madras in 1921, uh, there was this fort, number one was the fort, number two was the central station, number three was the government house, number four is the St. George's uh, Cathedral and, um, and at number five is the Mailapur Cathedral. You can see all these located in the drawing. Next we come to the city of Kolkata, uh, which was which was Calcutta at the when the British East India Company was there and the uh, city of Calcutta developed as a colonial city. It became the capital of the British India, it was the capital of the British Indian Empire till 1911 before the capital was relocated to Delhi and Calcutta was developed by the British after they took over three villages uh, which which is you can see on the location of these three villages and then they developed the settlement or they built upon on the settlement. Calcutta developed as, as you can as I said was built up on these three villages on the eastern banks of the Hooghly River as you can see from this picture on this figure and primarily there was it was a linear settlement and there was grid pattern of roads which soon developed organically in a haphazard manner and uh, around the European settlements and then if we see the um, so, Mumbai and Kolkata uh, and Calcutta had a similarity in, in the sense that they were linear and they were along, Mumbai was along the sea, uh, Calcutta was along the river. When we see the uh, Danish colonies, we see that uh, they settled in India in 1620 and the most important settlements were on the eastern coast. One was Tranquibar in Tamil Nadu and which is now known as Tharangambadi and the next was Sirampur in West Bengal. And when we look at the settlement pattern of this time period, we see that uh, we we are taking up the, um, Frank Weber as a case to understand the settlement pattern of this point of time. Frank Weber was the headquarters of this taluk. It was a taluk headquarters in Tamil Nadu. And it was a Danish colony between 1620 to 1845. And it was founded when a factory was opened and a fort named as Fort Dansborg was built by a Danish captain named Owe Jere. And the settlement pattern showed that it was a well fortified settlement. It, there was grid iron pattern and there was distinct hierarchy of roads to facilitate trade and commerce. There were very distinct public structures which dominated the city and there were churches which formed the nodes of growth. Houses were of renaissance style 
And that was the pattern or characteristic pattern of the settlement under this period of time or in this period of under the, in the Danish uh, period of time. Now we come to the French colonies or the French settlements. We see that the French East India Company, which was formed in 1664 by Colbert, settled or started their first factory in Surat. They established their first factory in Surat by Franco and Martin in 1668. Another factory was set up in Masulipatanam. And in 1674, Pondicherry was founded by Franco and Martin, who was the first governor of the French headquarters in India. Other French factories were in Mahe, Karaikal, and Chandanagar. Chandanagar is in West Bengal. So these are the, you can see from this drawing, the settlements. And the major settlements were Chandanagar, which was in West Bengal, then Yana, Pondicherry, Karaikal, and Mahi. So both on the western and the eastern coast, the French settled. Now, here we take up a case of Pondicherry, which was one of the important or the significant settlements of this time period. So initially, there was this Portuguese established factory that which I mentioned earlier in the 16th century. Then the ruler of Gingi of the Vijayanagar Empire forced them out in the same century, followed by the Dutch who found this place attractive and established their presence in the 17th century. And finally the French came who defined this place in 1654. This was the history of Pondicherry and so with the French it was the last or the Pondicherry was in the hands of the French till India gained independence and post-independence also it was in the hands of the French. Now, what was the settlement pattern like of Pondicherry? There was a typical, it had a typical French style. There was a grid plan where the streets me met each other at right angles. There was a distinct French quarter known as Vele Blanche and was separated by a canal from the Indian quarter. Then, so therefore, there were exclusive colonies so the French colonies was exclusive and separated from the Indian part. It, there was well-planned sanitation networks and port infrastructure and only small-scale and non-polluting industries were permitted within the settlement. Dear students, today we have uh, learned and understood how the or what was the different phases of colonization in our country as and when we started discussing the colonizers as and when they came so the port with the portuguese then the dutch then the british or then the danish and the french so we will when we have seen that as i've said earlier that it was the British which, which ruled and there was this British Raj which happened after the Sepai mutiny which is as a ruler. So we would be discussing the British Raj in the next module. So this module we have learnt that part of the colonizers who came in for trade and settled down and what was their settlements like and what was the settlement pattern like their cities uh, how what were their cities like and what sort of facilities they had thank you